Hello and welcome. In this video, we are going to talk about endometrial cancer. The classification included in this video has been released in 2023 by the International Federation of Gynecology and Obstetrics. So endometrial cancer or corpus cancer is the most frequently occurring can cancer of gyne gynecology in developed countries. The median age of women is 62 years and the patient's age ranges from 55 to 64 years. Adenocarcinoma endometrium is the most common type. Carcinoma of the cervix is the commonest tumor in developing countries. 25% of endometrial cancers are in perimenopausal or premenopausal patients. The menstrual pattern will become heavier and more frequent. In postmenopausal women, the most common symptom is postmenopausal bleeding. And approximately one out of every five cases of postmenopausal bleeding will be due to cancer. The etiology of endometrial cancer can be uh, seen from a perspective of endogenous factors or factors which are present within the patient herself or ex exogenous factors. That means something that has been intervened or brought in from outside. Endogenous factors include obesity, nulliparity, late menopause after 52 years of age and unopposed estrogenic stimulation of the uterus. While Exogenous factors include the use of tamoxifen for cases of breast cancer, combination oral contraceptives over a long period of time, especially around menopause, and cigarette smoking. Continuing with etiology, we find that there is a certain phenotype in which women are more predisposed towards endometrial cancer. These are women who have had breast colon or ovarian cancers in their families or personally themselves. Obese women with diabetes, hypertension and late menopause are at higher risk for endometrial cancer. And in these particular cases, cancer is usually well differentiated. However, even thin women can develop endometrial cancer. In endometrial cancer, Patients usually pre present with postmenopausal bleeding or vaginal discharge, which is brownish or reddish in color. And around perimenopause, the bleeding may become heavier and more irregular. The bleeding occurs usually from the endometrium. And so on pelvic examination, findings may be entirely normal with no gross evidence of disease on the cervix and with a normal size uterus. In multigravid patients, the uterus may be bulky because of childbearing. On examination, the cervix will appear normal and a pap smear is usually done at this stage. The ex examination findings will depend on the stage of the disease. As many endometrial cancers are diagnosed in the early stage, you may not find very many physical findings. It's important to diagnose this case from other cases which may present in a similar way. So bleeding from the lower genital tract can occur from the cervix, from the vulva, from the vagina, and inspection usually helps to identify these lesions. Atrophic changes in the vagina may lead to bleeding, particularly postcoital. Bleeding from the uterus may be due to any of the many types of benign lesions, for example, endometrial polyps, cervical polyps, endometritis, or hormone replacement therapy, which is unopposed. And the initial diagnosis of endometrial cancer will be made as an office procedure where a PIPEL biopsy may be performed or even a hysteroscopy and an uh, individual biopsy may be performed. If the biopsy is negative and the patient continues to be symptomatic, 
then it is best better to do a hysteroscopically directed biopsy. Dilatation and curettage have very limited value if a hysteroscope is present. And in such cases, then examination of patient would be done under anesthesia to ensure a thorough examination of the endometrial cavity and a proper biopsy. The histological findings are the standard for making a diagnosis of the endometrial cavity. After a histopathological diagnosis of endometrial cancer is obtained, several investigations may be necessary to assess the extent of the disease, to determine the stage of the disease, and to plan the most appropriate treatment. The specific investigations may vary depending on the individual patient and the suspected stage of cancer. There are some common investigations that are typically considered before cancer for further diagnosis. So we can do imaging studies and these are pelvic ultrasound. A transvaginal ultrasound may be performed to assess the thickness of the endometrium and the presence of any other abnormalities in the pelvis. A pelvis magnetic resonance imaging, especially with contrast, can provide very detailed images of the pelvic region, helping to determine the extent of the tumor involvement in nearby structures, such as the cervix, the myometrium, and nearby lymph nodes. A computerized tomographic or CT scan may also be performed to evaluate the extent of the disease, especially to check if the involvement of distant lymph nodes or metastasis to other organs like the lungs or the liver. A repeat endometrial biopsy may be performed to confirm the histopathological diagnosis, particularly if there is suspicion of more aggressive or advanced disease. A chest x-ray is performed to find out if there are any signs of lung metastasis. Cystoscopy and proctoscopy will be recommended if there is concern that the tumor has invaded the bladder or the rectum. Lymph node assessment, depending on the stage and the grade of the cancer, a sentinel lymph node assessment or pelvic lymph node dissection will be considered to determine if the cancer has spread to nearby lymph nodes. CA125 blood test is a tumor marker that may be elevated in cases of advanced endometrial cancer. It is not used for diagnosis, but can be monitored to assess treatment response or recurrence in cases when it is raised. The pre-operative assessment, which includes routine pre-operative evaluations, including blood tests, complete blood count, liver function tests, renal function tests, and an ECG are typically done to ensure that the patient is medically fit for surgery. Other important steps to be taken after the initial diagnosis include consultation with gynecologic oncologist. It is crucial for patients with endometrial cancer to be evaluated by a gynecologic oncologist as they specialize in the surgical and medical management of gynecology cancers. They can help to determine the appropriate surgical approach and any potential need for adjuvant therapy. The staging evaluation will be based on the results of the investigations and the cancer will be staged according to the latest FIGO staging system. Staging helps to determine the extent of the cancer and guides treatment decisions. The specific investigations and their order may vary depending on the individual patient's circumstances, which includes the grade and the stage of the cancer, the patient's overall health status, and other factors. It is essential for the health care team to carefully evaluate each case and tailor the investigations and treatment plan accordingly. We have mentioned sentinel lymph node evaluation 
let us just talk a little bit about it in detail. So sentinel lymph node evaluation is a technique used to determine whether cancer has spread to nearby lymph nodes. In patients with pelvic cancer such as endometrial or cervical. Sentinel node identification can be done before or during surgery. And there are different methods for doing so. These include lymphoskintigraphy, which means a pre-operative imaging technique that involves injecting a radioactive tracer, usually technetium-99, near the tumor site. Blue dye injection. The blue dye is taken up by the sentinel lymph nodes, making them visually distinguishable during surgery. The combination of radioactive tracer and blue dye increases the accuracy of the sentinel lymph node detection. Surgical exploration is, uh, is done at the time of, of uh, laparotomy or at the time of laparoscopic surgery and the lymph nodes are removed and sent to the pathology lab for examination. Intraoperative frozen section analysis can provide a preliminary assessment of whether cancer is present in the sentinel nodes while the patient is still in the operating room. Sentinel lymph node biopsy, formal examination on histopathology, involves carefully examining the sentinel nodes to check for the presence of cancer cells using traditional histological methods. Ultra-staging in some cases may undergo, which involves more detailed examination techniques such as immunohistochemistry or polymerase chain reaction or PCR to detect micrometastasis or isolated tumor cells that may not be visible with standard histopathology. Completion lymph adenectomy means that the, uh, if the sentinel lymph nodes are found to be positive for cancer, the surgeon may perform a complete lymph adenectomy, removal of all pelvic lymph nodes to ensure thorough removal of cancerous lymph nodes and assess the extent of lymph node assessment or involvement. So the use of sentinel lymph node evaluation in pelvic cancer should only be done by a gynecology oncologist. So why is there a need for a new classification of endometrial cancer? Since 2009, there have been many new discoveries about endometrial cancer. The Cancer Genome Atlas is now providing more information about the various subtypes, how they behave and their genetic characteristics. The new staging system aims to better classify and treat the different types of endometrial cancer based on this new knowledge. The updated 2023 staging of endometrial cancer includes histological types, tumor patterns and molecular classification to better reflect the improved understanding of the complex nature of the several types of endometrial cancer and their underlying biological behavior. The changes incorporated in the 2023 staging system should provide a more evidence-based context for treatment recommendations and for the more refined future collection of outcome and survival data. The histological types is an important prognostic predictor in endometrial carcinoma, and it is important to note that all endometrial carcinomas now should be classified according to the fifth edition of the World Health Organization classification of tumors, female genital tumors. And so the histological types have been recognized as low grade, high grade and specific cell type. When feasible, the addition of molecular subtype to the staging criteria allows a better prediction of prognosis in the staging prognosis scheme. 
it is very important that you should know about the addition of molecular subtyping even though you may not know exactly what they mean so the the the, the conduct of these tests and the interpretation of these tests can be done by gynecologic oncologists and is not within the domain of the generalist so polymerase epsilon mutated carcinomas or polled MUT molecular classification, they denote a favorable prog prognosis. While the other, um, the other molecular classification, for example, the MMRD, which is a mismatch repair deficiency, or the NSMP, which is the, uh, the non-specific molecular profile they indicate an intermediate prognosis and the pf3 or the um, what, what is known as the pf3 protein is not associated or is with a good prognosis so it is not important to know these molecular classifications but it's just important to know that addition of molecular subtyping has been added to the FIGO classification the International Federation of Gynecology and Obstetrics, a 2023 staging system for carcinoma of corpus uteri has been provided in this slide in a very simplified version. And for a more detailed version, you can refer to the article which will be uh, mentioned in the reference in the description below. So stage one is confined to the uterus and the ovary. Uh, stage two is tumor is invading the cervical stroma, but does not extend beyond the uterus. Whereas stage 3, 3A, 3B, 3C, and stage 3, local or regional spread of the tumor of any histologic subtype, vagina, parametria, pelvic peritoneum, and metastasis to the pelvic or paraaortic lymph nodes of both. Stage 4, spread to the bladder mucosa and or intestinal mucosa and or distant metastasis. So this is a much more detailed classification and it will be mentioned in the as a reference down below. So supposing if you have to, uh, if you have stage one endometrial cancer in a patient, then the, the treatment as uh, understood for a, from a generalist perspective is total hysterectomy and bilateral salpingophorectomy without vaginal cuff resection using a minimally invasive surgical approach. The decision is made after complete evaluation of the patient who has already had an initial diagnosis with the histological typing of the tumor. And this is only for non-aggressive tumors. Similarly, this is stage two of the FIGO classification in which there is involvement of the extra uterine extension or with substantial lymph vascular space invasion or aggressive histological types. In such cases, you would do a radical hysterectomy, pelvic, pelvic lymph adenectomy, lymph node dissection and adjuvant radiotherapy may also be required. The decisions is made after complete evaluation of the patient who has already had an initial diagnosis with histological typing of the tumor. And as mentioned before, these decisions should preferably be taken by the gynecology oncologist after complete evaluation and after complete review of the literature as to the most appropriate treatment for the patient. In stage three, FIGO staging of cancer of the endometrium, much more involvement of molecular as well as of histological classification has been added and the treatment for stage 3 endometrial cancer is often the same type of surgery that's used for high grade cancer after surgery radiation chemotherapy or both may be used and the chemotherapy often includes the drug pacli tictaxel and carboplatin but ephosphamide along with paclitaxel or cisplatin may be used. Stage four, 
when the tumor has spread beyond the uterus and has spread into organs such as the bladder or the intestines or there is distant metastasis, the treatment is then preferably or always not surgical. Instead, chemotherapy, hormonal therapy, immunotherapy and sometimes radiation therapy will be performed. And such cases may also follow a protocol if there is a clinical trial in progress in a regional center for endometrial cancer. So then these patients would then be included in the clinical trials as very little evidence is available on these kind of tumors. If a patient has been diagnosed with endometrial cancer, then what should be the special considerations for management? Standard management involves surgery followed by chemotherapy and or radiation therapy. Hormonal and or immunotherapy can also be considered. For recurrent disease, the gynecology oncologist will have to present the case to tumor board to agree on the ensuing treatment, which may be any one of the following. Secondary cytoreduction, chemotherapy, hormonal therapies, immunotherapy, radiation therapy. If it is appropriate, these patients would also be included in clinical trials for some special protocol. And this would depend upon the center which, is, which has uh, designed the clinical trial. Prognostic factors for improved long-term are absence of residual disease. Post-operative complications related to hypertension, obesity, diabetes, and increased age are present in cases of endometrial cancer. The risk for thromboembolism and use of some type of DVT prophylaxis is recommended. And for complicated surgeries, the risk of, uh, of surgery will also be included as a endometrial cancer complication. As far as the pharmacological treatment is concerned, the treatment of endometrial cancer will need to be individualized depending on the patient's factors and the stage of the disease. Although surgery is the mainstay of therapy for most cancers of the endometrium, non-surgical treatments such as radiation therapy, chemotherapy and hormonal therapy can play a role. These therapies are used as adjuvant or adjunctive therapy in the treatment of recurrences or metastatic disease or in patients who are unable to have surgery. Tumor boards with multidisciplinary groups will guide the treatment. As far as endometrial cancer radiotherapy is concerned, in advanced cases of endometrial cancer, radiation therapy may be used as part of the treatment approach. The type of radiation therapy used and its specific application can vary depending on the stage of the disease and the extent of the cancer and the patient's overall health and other individual factors. And this radiation can take many forms, either external or systemic, or it may even be palliative. It is important for patients with advanced individual cancer to have thorough discussions with their healthcare team to understand the potential benefits. We come now to the slide showing prognosis of endometrial cancer. So with the new classification, we will have a better understanding of the prognosis of the different stages of endometrial cancer. But as far as current knowledge is concerned, we know that the stage of the disease is the most important prognostic factor. Histologic subtypes such as clear cell and papillary serous adenocarcinoma represent approximately 10% of all endometrial cancers and are poor histopathologic subtypes. They have deeply invasive myometrial involvement and they have a propensity for extra uterine spread even though the myometrium may be superficially involved. 
These subtypes are not usually graded, but are considered in the same category as a poorly differentiated cancer. Grade is important and poorly differentiated adenocomponent influences prognosis. Patients with well-differentiated adenocarcinomas tend to involve the endometrium or superficial and myometrium and extra uterine disease is unusual. Peritoneal cytology evaluation of the peritoneum appears to be an important prognostic factor. The FIGO staging system states that positive cytology should be reported separately without changing the stage. Lymph node metastasis has poor prognosis. With this, we come to the end of our presentation. And uh, if you like the video, then press the like button. Please subscribe so that we can continue to do this work. Please share the video with friends or colleagues. Give your comments on what else you would like to know about gynecology and obstetrics. And press the bell icon so that you can be notified of future videos. Thank you and goodbye.